Hi everyone. This tutorial is um, going to be the next stage of um, doing Tinker's uh, body or this is a way that I do um, my body's period. Um, I, I had to make a decision and um, I did start uh, Tinker's Body and I found that as, I'm, as I was doing Tinker's Body and then trying to film it and everything that I was handling it so much that it was actually getting to um, be uh, too dirty. So I decided to make two bodies. One body is going to be for the actual doll that I'm making and then the other body is going to be showing you as um, more of instructions or um, how I came about doing certain areas. Um, I'm also in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you, I'm going to be giving you a, some other information also. but. Um, all of you that you've watched my um, tutorials and everything, um, you all know that the way that I sculpt is it is uh, through visual and it's through uh, feeling things out. So um, this I do not consider myself um, a drawer. I wish I could. So. These are just my drawings, but they work for me. And this one here is, this is an old one. You can see it's just all tore up and everything. But I wanted to show you that this is going to be the beginning of how I started to see things. And um, everything I see is in shapes. So when... Um, I get my clay out, which um, in my uh, next tutorial, I'm going to uh, take the clay and I'm going to show you um, how um, I see and how I get the, the shapes that you see on my drawing. The other thing, um, see I drew another one. Now this is just was going to be the torso and it, I was starting it for Tinkerbell but um, I made it a lot larger than what I wanted. But I was just messing around and just really just playing that day. So I am going to downscale this one. Um, I also wanted to show you this too. Now this is my, this is my own drawing. And um, there is a, lo a lot of mistakes in this one. But I'm going to be doing um, a fashion model. And uh, fashion model uh, dolls are one that I haven't, I've really never uh, have done. And I know they have real long legs. They're, they're real thin. And they're, they're, they're just proportioned differently. So it's going to be a, a great experience. And I hope that I can do it. But I drew it out, and um, I, I just wanted to feel it out. I wanted to see, um, because their legs are so long and everything, how tall, how tall and how big of a doll am I really um, going for. So when I drew it out, she appears to me that she is going to be about nine hits. Now then, the one thing that I wanted to... Uh, suggest here is that you can go on the internet and you can find a lot of uh, these uh, poses and you can use these to uh, use them to scale out your your doll. I used to do it too and something just clicked with me and it was like I was just seeing the same thing over and over and over and it just the drawing didn't feel like it was me. So I says, well, you know, we can do anything if we put our minds to it. So I just got some paper and I, I, I basically looked up uh, a little bit of drawing of, uh, you know, how they do it with the shapes and whatever. And then I pretty much um, started to, to draw it out. I wasn't looking for perfection. But what I was looking for was to draw something that was from me and my, my own emotions 
And when I started doing this, I found that my work started to feel different to me. It felt like it was more my style. And this is what we all want to find within ourselves is our own style. We don't want to be out there looking at everybody's work and then trying to become what they've become. It's impossible. We all have that talent and we can all do this. We just have to find our own way. So I'm sharing this little tip with you is try getting a piece of paper out. Try drawing it out. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. The faces don't have to be perfect. Nothing. Unless you're just having fun and you're just wanting to do it, then do it. But it's really for um, my scale and how I'm going to pose my doll. But like I said, I've got a lot of mistakes in this one and I will have to redo it. But this will be for a fashion model, but I wanted to share that with you. Now I'm going to set these aside now that you've uh, seen that the next tutorial, um, I will be showing you um, how I'm going to do the torso for Tinkerbell. And I wanted to say, because you see all these lines and everything, please don't get intimidated with it. It is not as hard as this looks like on paper. Okay, now there's something that I wanted to also share with you. Is that um, there's um, some particular clays, brand clays that I use. Uh, one is Cernet. One is Cato. And the other one is Bozzy. Um, I have used, I think I have tried um, every clay, polymer clay that has been out on the market. Okay. Um, I'm not going to sit here and, and put any um, product down. But I'm going to give you my opinion of what works for me. Um when I can't work with a clay that is really soft, and I do understand there's a lot of people out there that they might have arthritis or they might have, um, you know, just a weakness in their hands and they can't work with a firm clay, so they would most definitely need a soft clay. Well, soft clay for me, um, it gives me a lot of problems with me sculpting. Now I'm going to give you a sneak preview of the, of, um, the tutorial coming up. And um, now this is going to be um, the body that I am going to use for my doll. Okay, and you're going. To, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring the camera up because this is the part that I wanted to show you. And to be honest with you, I might even do this over because this is when I made the decision that I have to um, make two because working on just the, the one for the doll, it's just getting too dirty. Okay, let me um, bring the camera up and I'm going to show you. And I'm hoping it's going to pick it up. Okay, now I'm going to show you. Um, I meant to have my tools here just a second. Okay, you guys, I didn't have my um, tool set up. Um, I'm just going to shut down, and then I'll be right back with my tools. Okay, sorry about that, you guys. Okay, um, this piece right here is extremely dirty for me. And um, I thought about this, and, and I was going to start cleaning it up to see um, how it's going to clean. And then I thought, well, you know what, why not do a tutorial and show you a way that you can clean up your work a little bit. Okay, but this is extremely dirty. But 
I'm going to show you something, and um, I am not going to take the credit uh, for this technique because I believe I heard it from another artist or somebody. Um, who it was, I have no clue because it was uh, so long ago. Okay, uh, go out and get yourself some magic uh, Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. Make sure it's the original. Now what I did was you get, um, they're, they're like a sponge if you, um, if you haven't seen them, okay? But I'm going to show you what it, what it does. Okay, now this is on the raw clay. Um, now this is the part that I wanted to um, uh, really uh, stress here. The clay that I'm using here, this one is Kato. And if you're using a real, real soft clay, I do not know how it's, these sponges are going to work on it. And you'll see why. Okay, let's see if we can get some of this off. Okay, um, here's a piece of hair and there's some little specks here. Now what I do, and I'm not bearing down really hard, okay? Now what it does is the sponge, wait for it to focus, okay, the sponge will leave uh, little particle pieces, but believe it or not, it, this, it does not go into my clay unless I'm sitting here and I'm going to press it into the clay, which I'm not going to. Let's see if I can get some of this out. Now some of the stuff you'll, you know, you might have to sit there and cut it out but I use this um, usually when it's it's just starting to get dirty on me I will use this and then you can just lightly brush it off it comes off real real easy we're now waiting for it to focus come on Okay. It didn't totally get that out yet, but see how it got the hair out? Okay. Let's try this area. And you'll also notice that your clay will lighten up. And uh, you'll, you'll see that, see how it, it's a little bit lighter than it is in here? Okay, I'm going to just do it right in this area. And see, now if you're really, if you're, if you've got real soft clay, I, I, honestly, I don't think you could use this because, um, I, I think it would mess up your sculpt if um, if it was really soft. See, I have to have a firm clay, and this is why. I You just have so many options of um, with your clay if it's nice and firm. Okay, now she's not shaped anywhere the way that I want, want her to, 
but I wanted to, to just share this technique with the uh, magic eraser because um, I can see that the camera I thought that it would show up better but it's really not but anyways if you decide to try this because it does get it, it's not going to get all the dirt off but um, it will get some and I look at it this way um, if I can get some off and um, then uh, cook it and I honestly don't like using acetone but I know sometimes um, you have to do it I've done it but I really try my best not to I just don't like um, how the acetone it changes the texture of the, of the clay it's just the way I feel uh, you when you use it you oil it down or whatever I, do, I just it's just me I just don't care for it but I will say that it will clean your your clay up pretty good um, now what what you also can do what I would do with this okay I would go over it I would clean this all up and then when I'm done, make sure that you got all the little particles off. And you can just take a little paintbrush and just wipe it, wipe it off. You can see it comes off really easy. It's not going into my clay. Is that after I cook it, then I will take the magic eraser and you would be amazed how much more that you can get off the dirt. Um, at that point, if um, I don't get enough dirt off of it between doing it this way, the second way is after when it's cooked, I'll use the magic eraser. And then the, my last resort would be the acetone. So I just wanted to share that little technique with you. It really does work. But like I said, it's not going to totally get all of that dirt off for you. I don't want to mislead you with that because I know every one of us that work with polymer clay will always say, how do you keep your clay so clean? That is a real problem. The other thing, the last thing that I want to share with you, and now this is going to be up to you, and I have been doing this for years, and um. I, I really don't know how to explain this, but I'm going to just share with you what I do. And if you feel like you want to try it, um, please do this on a scrap piece of clay because it changes the texture of my clay and I love it. Okay, what I do is, um, here I have some Kato clay. And um, I don't have any uh, cernet sitting in front of me, but I have even some um, Bosi clay. And what I do is, if I'm going to use Kato, I will take pieces off and I will run it through my pasta machine and then what I do after I I get it all um, you know in my pieces and flattened out I have two choices here and both of these work for me okay people say add white to your clay because um, you will get less moonies okay that is very very true but I found something that I didn't have to do and there's some clays that they say that there's white already added to it I don't know it all depends on when you cook it if you've got moonies you got to figure out why you got mo moonies okay I honestly do not add white to my clay um, what I do is 
I take um, Genesis paints and this is flush and this is how I color my uh, clay and I add white to it I add the flush to it and you don't use much you do not use much at all okay I take a little bit of um, you know d depending on um, the colors that, that you want um, here's my white that I use I'll stick the white in there I'll stick some uh, this is uh, I can't red red three but I can't make out what the color is it's kind of worn worn or I, or the reflection is I can't see it but anyways um, I did this because when I first started I, I uh, worked with um, porcelain and I loved um, the porcelain color that um, they had at that time and it was called rose and I wanted to do the same thing with my um, polymer clay. I wanted to get that color of uh, porcelain that um, I was using. So when I took the paints and I mixed it, and I'll show you uh, how I did it, is I took this little um, container and all it is is it's Maxwell melts and I thought oh this would be uh, a really cool thing to um, put paints in and here I have my uh, flesh with my blush and white and I mix it up and usually I mix up enough quite a bit in there the color that I want and um, so that if I ever ran out of uh, clay from my sculpture I've I've got the color and then I do measure out my my clay so that I know how much uh, paint to add to it now the only thing that when you do this you're gonna have to really really make sure that you mix it up very well okay I will stress that with you but what it does is it changes my texture of clay why I don't know but this is a little piece that I have um, mixed up now it's been sitting and it hasn't been worked or anything but it it um, it doesn't get mushy on me it I don't know it I just love the feel of it and all I can do is I can just uh, say that try it on a little piece of uh, scrap clay. Um, does it work on um, Sculpey? Um, what is it? Fimo, Primo, um, Pro Sculpt? Um, I can't really say because I gave up those clays. I don't use them anymore and I don't want to use them anymore. Um, just because um, these three clays work for me very well. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, the other thing that it also does is that have you ever um, started a sculpt and just so many things um, got into your way to where your sculpt sat for a very long time and when you go back to it, if you've got the legs or the arms on it, or even the torso, it'll start cracking. Well, since I put the Genesis paints in it, it doesn't do that. It, I can have it sit there for a long time, and it won't crack on me. Now, when I mix it, um, you know, you, you just d take your paintbrush, and you just... Put just a little bit of color in it mix it up and see what color that you're really wanting to go for and I would suggest that if you try it on a, a little scrap piece remember um, put it in your oven and cook it because it does change the the, the coloring a little bit when um, you bake it 
um, just just to make sure honestly I haven't had a problem with um, the colors after I've been, I've baked it but it doesn't take much um, but out of everything it's the texture that I like and I don't have to buy all these other different color clays to mix it in with my flush I just do it with the paints and I love it um, I think that was um, all that I was going to say and I'm going to get busy on the uh, Tinkerbell uh, torso and I hope that this tutorial has um, helped you in some way. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to ask me. Um, I will answer your questions as soon as possible. I'm not um, a person here that's going to sit and not answer anybody's questions. If you also feel like you want to email me, email me um, and I will do the best that I can. So you guys, I hope that um, you're looking forward um, to doing the, um, the t torso and um, I know I am, and I better get busy, but I wanted to give you a heads up and a few tips and um, cleaning the clay, putting paint in the clay. So these are all little things that you can just play with. And I hope that there will be something there that um, you can use and it will make a big difference for you. And um, I will leave it there and see you next time. Have a great day and thank you so much for viewing my uh, videos and please leave, leave those comments. I love them. Thank you.